Hello, welcome to Arts in Action. I'm your host, Arlene Barshinger, and I'm very excited to have with me today a very talented artist by the name of Neil Barbosa, but he also goes by Live Painter. So welcome to Arts in Action. Oh, well, thank you. Nice to be here. Great. I'm so glad to hear you. Now, where are you, where are you located? Santa Rosa, California. So he came all the way from Santa Rosa to our set, so thank you so much for coming here and showing your amazing artwork. I am so excited uh, to see your stuff. So as we were displaying it, I was like, wow, look at all this, this great art. So, but your art is different than a lot of people's art. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your um, techniques and what you do and how you paint before we start showing them? Well, yeah, sure. Um, well, I, to begin with, I'm uh, self-taught. Mm -hmm. So uh, with uh, no schooling or anything, and um, all of these paintings that you see here, uh, most of them except for the f flying eyeball and the heart, were um, done, painted on stage um, during live music. And so they're, they're really um, created in the moment, inspired by every beat of the drums and you know, lick of the guitar and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how they're created. So you do it while you're on stage mm -hmm. and, and while people are playing music. So, um, so I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that um, mm -hmm. after we, I show okay. you the paintings because yeah. um, I think that's very fascinating. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a little bit more about, about those. So now there is a very large painting behind you mm -hmm. um, and would you care to tell us a little bit about that painting? Uh, sure, yeah. And for people who don't know who it is, uh -huh. tell them who it is. Please. Yeah, um, that was my first painting of Jimi Hendrix. Because um, he's someone that I can uh, relate to, you know, in the moment uh, and everything. So uh, now about the painting, it's a uh, it's a forty eight by forty eight piece, mm -hmm. and it's it's acrylic on um, masonite. So um, it's and and the whole whole thing was created, you know during the music so I mean that's the that's the main part for me but all of the colors that you see in it are um, like in in the moment you don't have time to think when you're when you're performing you're kind of like um, how Jimi Hendrix is when he's like he doesn't even know anything is going on and I'm like in the same artistic bubble so what I'm doing I don't even know what's going on around me and, um, so now, what made you choose Jimi Hendrix during this? Like, do you remember what yeah. performances was, or who, who, what band, or what song it was when you painted it? Um, well, those, this particular one I did in two thousand nine, mm -hmm. and um, it, I believe, it was painted um, on stage at the at Lagunitas mm -hmm. um, in Petaluma, and the band was. Um, uh, Gooferman, mm -hmm. and they had a very high energy, cool, cool band to work with. Mm -hmm. And so, how long does how long did that take you to to paint that? To me, it would take fast. a lot. Yeah, yeah. To me, it would take a lot longer than just uh, you know one concert. Yeah, uh, tw uh, like twenty anywhere from like twenty five to thirty m minutes. Wow, really? Yeah. And, um, you did, so you did that whole big yeah. giant. So what's the size of that? So we can just kind of yeah, people get an idea. Four foot by four foot. Four foot by four yeah. foot. So you did a four by foot mm -hmm. by four foot painting. That whole thing. Did you touch it up after the concert at all? Did you do anything that, to it? No, or? that one. That one's completely raw. It's it's that's how it ended up, and I like to leave it that way because, you know, it's it's how it is. You can't go back and fix it. There are some that I do work on. You know, and I go if they make it back to my studio and they don't. Then I, you know, work on it, or if someone. Now, what do you mean by if they make it back to your studio? Well, I, because I, um, you know, I sell them at the show. Okay, and, so people and, end up purchasing them. While and you're so there. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't even have a chance to get any, you know, shots for, you know, whatever happens there. That's the shot to get the, you know, to be able to have a print of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now we have um, another Hendrix one behind you, mm -hmm. um, and um, can you oh, tell yeah. us? Oh yeah, that one. That one is a special one. That that one, uh, it was painted um, live at the Fillmore, mm -hmm. and um, it was painted. Um, it's hard for me to remember because I've been doing these live performances for like ten years, and uh, I do a lot of performances every single week, mm -hmm. and and this was. Um, it, 
it was a British rock and roll legend, and there was like a thousand people upstairs, and you know, a couple of thousand downstairs at the Fillmore, and um, there's video of it somewhere. But um, mm -hmm. anyways, that that's. Um, but you that's you chose to go. So now, how do you choose who you're going to paint when you're? It depends. Sometimes I I I just break out and and start doing whatever I want to do, and other times it depends on well, what the client wants. Mm -hmm. You know, because as, as I, I get booked to do shows, they might be doing a certain, like, breast cancer or, you know, something like that, or it, it, and it depends what the act is, too. If it's a rock and act that, you know, is, is high energy, then um, I'll either break out and do something on the spot or I'll come to the show with um, what they have in mind because mm -hmm. sometimes they have a theme going on and so I can do like whatever. I'll sketch it out ahead of time mm -hmm. and other times I'll just go for it and whatever happens, happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. So um, I've seen one of your videos mm -hmm. um, of you doing that. So, so do you tend to dance a lot to the music yeah. while you're... Yeah, I got brushes in both hands mm -hmm. and um, I can't help it. I love music. I've been listening to music my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, but so what came? What, what? What? How did you come up with the idea to do this? Like just one day, you just sat in your garage no. and said, "You know what? Well, I'm going to no. pick up a paintbrush and no, I music." No, I had already been painting um, and and trying to push my art, and it was t in the early '80s and '90s, and it, and it wasn't selling or anything. But my my um, inspiration and the the one and only guy that inspired me to even pick up a paintbrush was Stanley Mouse. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be an artist, you know, today because it's hard to stick with it for that many years. But now, who but, is Stanley but, Mouse for people who don't know? He uh, did a lot of the um, poster artwork in the um, '60s and '70s. Mm -hmm. For um, like uh, one stands out in my mind is um, the uh, Journey album cover, Grateful Dead mm -hmm. artwork, mm -hmm. and the Skull and Roses, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I forgot what your question. Oh, how I came up with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So he's your inspiration. Yeah, but but I mean, um, and there, how I came up with it was, uh, I listen. You know, I've been listening to live music my whole life, and and so one day I'm always hanging around musicians in the studio, listen to them rehearse, and I I was in the studio. And I'm like, you know, how can I? You know, there's got to be something I can do to interact with them. These are you know my friends hanging out with them. So I thought. Wow, well, I asked myself, what do I do? And I came up with the answer, I paint, so why not? You know, you got mm -hmm. a built-in audience, and, you know, it's a performance, it's to the music, it's a visual for all of the audience. And they audience. get to see it created right yeah. in front of them, and they so get they get to see it, it right before their eyes, right? So it really is a collaboration that every, all the, I, like another musician, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and, and they have, in, a, in an essence, they have a part of it, too, because the energy they bring to the room yeah. is We're also feeding what, off of it. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. just we're like all, the musicians do, you're yeah. feeding off it as well. And, and there, some of the musicians, I've, I've had them tell me, you know, we've been playing these same old songs, you know, which is nice and refreshing to have, you know, something different, something new. And then, uh, like, I'll be painting something and I'll be going, they'll be like, wait and see what I'm going to do next. So they'll play this guitar lick that's really like jamming to see where I'm going to go with my painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it kind of like, um, like I was on stage with Chris Pullen from May. Megadeth. Mm -hmm. um, he, I love that band. Yeah. <laughs> he, <he's, laughs> Symphony of Destruction is like my favorite song almost. <laughs> he was formerly with them, but um, he, he was, I was on stage with them in the band uh, called Ohm mm -hmm. and uh, with Kofi Baker on drums. And um, so he, he was, we were like almost, I had one of my guitar paintings, like well, one of these, mm -hmm. and I'm painting it. And then he would pay, play this like, thing. And then I'm, we're standing like a half a foot, you know, next to each other. So I'm going crazy. And then he's playing this guitar lick. And then I'm going, it's like dueling back and forth. So it, it was, uh, that show was a, a lot, lot of fun. fun. Yeah. I bet it was a lot of fun. So I'm going to take you to Marilyn. Of course, you know, nobody can deny who she is. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us a little bit about this painting. Now, these are all acrylics. Yes. Correct? Okay. Acrylic. So tell us a little bit about this painting and, um, and, did, was this a client request? What is, was it a... Um... Um, okay, this painting, um, th this is the second um, Marilyn Monroe that I did um, 
This one's three foot by three foot acrylic on canvas. The first one I did was four foot by four foot, and it was done for the bass player in Brett Michaels' band. Mm -hmm. His brother wanted to get him a birthday, birthday present, so mm -hmm. um, he commissioned me to do a Marilyn Monroe, same colors, and um, four foot by four foot, and he got that surprise and opened it up on stage. And um, th so this was the second one that I did, and this one, um, I became a um, raw artist and I was nominated um, in San Francisco as um, one of the, to be one of the um, raw performers uh, of the year in that, in that category. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I um, got invited to go to, to the award show. I didn't win mm -hmm. the award, but I got invited as one of the founders favorites. And so I did this show there at the Belasco in LA. Mm -hmm. And um, it was painted in like 20 minutes. And the other one that I did was painted, oh, oh this one, oh, I can't, I'm getting them mixed up, but one of them, I did a Marilyn Monroe that's not here today. Mm -hmm. And I painted that in five minutes in front of the judges. That was the, when I got nominated to do it. Now that was really hard to do. It, it has its own style, and um, it's just talk about pressure to, to do a minutes. piece in, in five minutes. I can totally see myself like just getting a spatula and just splashing everything <laughs> on there, five minutes to go, yeah. Um, so I can imagine, my, mine would not be, it would be you know, contemporary because it wouldn't look like a person uh, in that short a period of time for me. So even in a full period of time, I'm not much of a, a painter. So now, uh, so that's really fun. That's an awesome story. So now, do you do mostly rock bands when you do this, or do you do any, like, hip-hop, rap? Yeah, um, DJs, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Techno. Yeah, I can, I can get into that music as long as it's um, high energy and it moves me. Mm -hmm. If it moves me, I can do it. If it doesn't move me, I'll So go. the song, like, All Out of Love would not you know, I'd probably <laughs> be, be painting, it's really slow. <laughs> I'd be painting a bunch of art and I'd be painting like I paint in my studio, <laughs> something like that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I was just wondering if, you know, what kind of music, if you do everything, if you do, yeah, like slow music, maybe. There's, yeah, um, jazz. I like, you know, jazz, Buble. jazz rock, yeah. blues. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to do a, a jazz show, maybe at a fancy restaurant or a hotel, mm -hmm. I would get decked out and wear, you know, a suit and tie, bow tie, black and white, and come in with my easel and paint like I'm painting in my studio. <laughs> so now, now that you brought that up, like with restaurants, so you do, mm -hmm. you have been at restaurants mm -hmm. where you've done paintings and they've mm -hmm. had music there also mm -hmm. and to inspire you? Yeah. I wasn't sure how that would work with mm -hmm. as far as like regulations and stuff like that, with mm -hmm. the paints being in there and yeah. people eating and stuff, so I was wondering about how that yeah, it, it is um, kind of cool. I don't know. I'm sure if you if you ever have gone into a restaurant, you know, and there's always talking going on. There's always people, um, you know, you, you just you have that sur surrounding. So to mm -hmm. have like someone actually being creating something while all that stuff is going on, then you hear the music in the background, then maybe like a nice black and white painting of like, what I plan on doing in the future of uh, Django, mm -hmm. uh, Reinhardt, and just like something like that that um, adds to the ambiance of, you know, the dining and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing with, mm -hmm. with tying well. And as far as the paint goes, if you're doing something like that, you really, like, I paint at home, you know, right on the carpet, and, and <laughs> it's acrylic, so, mm -hmm. you know. You throw, I could throw down, you know, something, and if I'm worried about it, or just to, to um, not be con concerned about that. that's the last thing I, I think about because I get pain on everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess the life of a painter, the hazards of mm -hmm. the occupation. Mm -hmm. um, so this one here is an interesting one. Um, obviously, it's not uh, some of the, you know, some like the other paintings. So can you tell us about this painting? Um, of course, there's an eyeball with wings yeah. and then uh -huh. a heart. Uh, translate that for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that um, that painting. I actually like it. It's it's fantastic. Um. Yeah, it's so it's it just it has to do with um, um, loving and and seeing, you know, <laughs> and the city. Mm -hmm. So I, at first, I titled it. Um, 
love uh, or I, I love you, mm -hmm. you know, because it's an eyeball and then it's, and then it's a heart. And at the, at the last minute, I decided to put the city in there, you know, get the twin towers in the background. And so what was your inspiration for that one? That one, it didn't really, um, it started with, okay, that the painting was done um, at, a, at a show, I, I think it was um, the Highway Poets, mm -hmm. and um, there was a huge crowd and the music was very high energy, and, and I was doing some crazy painting over the top of it with um, graffiti. Mm -hmm. So um, I got these pens, these acrylic pens, and um, it was an experiment. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, um, I painted the eyeball and then I painted the heart because the heart was already kind of there. Mm -hmm. And then I painted the whole background blue. And well, sometimes the experiments come out the best. You yeah. Just, you just, you know, that's when you're the most creative really is if you're playing around and not really formulating anything. So I didn't know what, what it was going to be till the end. And, and, but all, all of those things are part of me as well. So, um, it's a little bit personal. Subliminally, attachment. you know, <laughs> I think that's why I painted. I hear that from, yeah. from a lot of artists. I don't know what mm -hmm. it's going to be till it's till it's mm -hmm. done. So I, I hear that from a lot of people. Um, so then we have uh, this one here of, oh, of course, you got Frank Zappa's name right there. So um, yeah. can you tell us about your painting there? Sure. That one is uh, 36 by 36 mm -hmm. acrylic on canvas mm -hmm. painted. Um, live at the Petaluma Music um, Festival, and that's that's all about um, putting music back. Was in that the, the one that was here recently? Um, or was that it? It wasn't that one. It was the one year before that. Okay. And um, they're about you know keeping music in in the schools. Mm -hmm. So um, I and paint, art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, music and art, and and I I painted that on a little stage that they set up for me, and then. Periodically, I would get up on stage with the band and, and do one of my smaller guitar paintings, rocking out with them, mm -hmm. you know. And that was done with both hands, you but know. But they probably had fully. a blast with that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they yeah. did. So now, um, you got something a little more contemporary. This is different from a lot of the pieces that you have. Yeah. Can you tell us about that piece over in the corner? Yeah, that one um, was done in a gallery, and um, it was just one of those paintings that you just put on the music and and go for it and wherever like the colors you got to decide in a split second mm -hmm. um, for what you're going to mix and what color is going to be. Mm, okay well um, the, and that one pretty much I like that one because that will pretty much go anywhere mm -hmm. as far as you know the colors it'll it'll fit in almost any room. Yeah mm -hmm. and and the formula is is something that I just came up over years and years and years of painting to just deciding what I'm happy with and, and what yeah what you don't and like where to put the colors it. and mm -hmm. where not to put them I don't really go back and fix them though like uh, once they land there they land yeah. so it's kind of like one of those things where you spin the wheel yeah and then wherever it lands, it stays. But you can add, the hard part is knowing when to stop. Uh -huh. <laughs> so to keep it Yeah, I'd have balanced. mounds and mounds of acrylic, you know, they, had to scrape it off. They gotta, you gotta keep the balance if you don't wanna like mud, muddy it up and, mm -hmm. so there you go. Um, tell us about this one in the corner. This is incredibly interesting. Mm -hmm. Is that anybody specific? Um, yeah, <laughs> that one is uh, Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, so you might recognize the, the, the hand, you know, because he's like, he's sitting, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, but I decided to not work on it too much. I, st I started to work on it a little bit because afterwards, like you were talking about, because the hat needed some work, and then I changed my mind on what color to, to make the um, silver parts on his hat, and then um, I just left it in the background and changed a couple times because, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't decide what color to make it. And I painted that live on stage uh, the previous year um, at Lagunitas during um, Gooferman. Mm -hmm. So I was on stage with them twice. Mm -hmm. And um, that, it, it didn't quite come out the way that I wanted it to because I was just, the painting fell off the stage at one point and um, there was just a lot of energy in, and there was a, a Jimi Hendrix um, cover band that I, that I was painting too. So I just left it like that, you mm -hmm. know. I think it's really cool. The lips, you know. It's you know, very creative. It, now I want to talk about this 
painting down here at the bottom, the Hendrix painting. Mm -hmm. And um, just so you know, I'm stealing this thing um, when you're not looking, when you're packing up to leave. So if it disappears, <laughs> no, I didn't do it. Um, somebody else did it. Yeah, uh, somebody else took it. Um, so anyway, so tell us about your Hendrix painting at the bottom of our desk here. Um, th that painting was done in the studio. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done live. And um, I like bright colors, so I wanted to throw on the black, the um, uh, orange background. Mm -hmm. um, I love the orange. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then do this, the silhouette over that. And um, so I'm listening to music with uh, surround sound, Jimi Hendrix, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And um, just painting. And at the last minute, I decided to do that border on there. Well, you obviously like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell by your paintings. So anyway, yeah, I love that. That's fantastic. Well, before we go to, we have a couple of other pieces that we're going to show. Mm -hmm. before, we, before we go to those, are these all available for sale? Yes. They are available for sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just so you all know, these are available for sale if you're interested in purchasing any of those. And we'll get to his contact information in just a moment. So um, can we show this one here of okay. your... Um, yeah, it's Gibson Les, Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And that one was painted at, at the Belasco as well, Belasco mm -hmm. Theater in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a DJ on, on stage. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my other favorites is uh, painting guitars. And I just love gu guitars. And I, um, during the performance, most of these guitars are um, a collaboration where I jam with the musician that's playing the guitar. And that's how you see all of these um, brush strokes. Mm -hmm. So those brush strokes are, and then like this scrape right there is me like jamming with throwing the, the end of the brush mm -hmm. um, is coming across the painting. And a lot of times I'll mess it up before, before the end is over like the other one, mm -hmm. the next um, one. And so, yeah, I, I just love guitars and I put that all of these strokes and blend the colors mm -hmm. just the way that I want them. Mm. This, and this one's done on a wood backing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yes, this one was framed in um, uh, plywood and painted on plywood. I had a friend of mine um, build these for me mm -hmm. and um, started off with the black background and then a clear coat of varnish over the top. Mm -hmm. and it's nice and shiny. Mm -hmm. Protects so. it from UV rays and uh, any kind of moisture. Mm -hmm. Well, this one's really nice. So let's get, can you grab the other one for me while I set this one down? Sure. Let's see here. Okay. Let's do this one. And there's another guitar. Yeah. Now this guitar, it has, um, you can see that um, I use the other end of the brush for mm -hmm. to get all of that like high energy stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm jamming. Uh, to the music with the band. Mm. So now, do you remember what group you were playing this to? Um, it was, yeah, this one was done most recently. And uh, this, I think this painting, I want to say. You've done so many that if you yeah. don't remember, it's OK. <laughs> <You know, laughs> had so many concerts and so forth. But it, it's a vintage guitar. And mm -hmm. I always want to say, um, it, it, I think it was a Firebird. Mm -hmm. It's a vintage uh, Firebird guitar. Okay. So these are also available for sale, correct? Yes, okay. these are for sale. Do you ever feel like there's any paintings you don't want to sell because it's like a too, mu too much of a piece of you that you yes. don't want to you know, get rid of it? Yeah, those ones, um, I just price them really high. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, so your separation from these particular pieces mm. are, are at a price, huh? Mm -hmm. So now tell us about this one here. Um, yeah, this is like the um, Day of the Dead uh, skull, mm -hmm. and this this was painted live at the Hop Hop Monk mm -hmm. in Sebastopol. Mm -hmm. A really cool music venue. I, I was painting there every Thursday for a couple of years, and they would have these themed events with um, DJs and then um, if vendors and you know stuff going on in the uh, beer garden. So mm -hmm. um, th that theme was like. Day of the Dead, um, 
was the thing. Sort of theme, yeah. yeah. Well, um, these are all fantastic. I love these paintings, and there's so many more that you get, didn't get to bring or mm -hmm. we didn't get to show. Um, can you tell us how to get a hold of you um, if they yes. want to purchase your paintings? Uh -huh. Well, the, the best way is through um, neobarbosa.com. Mm -hmm. That goes straight to my artist page where you can you know, buy prints of these very same paintings, and then you can contact me through there if you want to buy originals. So okay. those are the cliche, uh, cliche, I don't know how to pronounce it, but they're, mm -hmm. they're um, professional prints on canvas, mm -hmm. as well as um, other materials, all the way up to four foot. Okay, and then we'll have his information also in the credits, so you can check him out that way. I want to thank you for joining us today for Arts in Action with Neil Barbosa, also known as Live Painter. You can join us on www.vcat.tv, or you can watch us on AT&T's um, UVerse, Channel 99, and also on Comcast, Channel 27. And the shows are on Saturday at 5 p.m. or on Sunday at 2 p.m. Thank you so much for coming out and watching us, and um, we hope that you go out and watch Neil perform. Livepainter.com. Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming out. Yeah. I mean, that was a long drive. Thanks, thanks for having me, and mm -hmm. I hope this encourages other painters to get out there and try it, inspiring painters. And do something well. different. Yeah. And, and musicians. I'm sure there'll be musicians that will um, be going, hey, we need to spruce up our, mm -hmm. our shows, and maybe we can have Neil come out and paint for us. That would be fantastic. Yeah, that, that would be great. Is there anybody in particular you want to play for? Or you want to Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is. Like um, um, Primus and the Bottle Rock that's going to be going on in Napa. Mm -hmm. uh, I really would love to get booked to do that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe Satriani, I mean, it's just so hard to reach these people because they have agents and whatnot. But yeah. I know they would really dig what I do because mm -hmm. Um, most artists can totally relate and get into it. Yeah, that would be really, really neat.